Greetings, everyone, in the precious, matchless name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who alone is worthy to receive all the praise, honor, and glory, thanksgiving, and power forever belonging unto Him. This is part two of my series of messages that I started on the subject of Israel, God's chosen people. And uh, I left off, I was, I was talking about that fact that God has a controversy with this world and with his people, Israel. Uh, the word controversy used in the King James Bible is translated from the original Hebrew word sayak, which means an uttered or spoken complaint or a cause. We can see from today's news headlines and from the past since Israel became a nation again in 1948 that the world has a controversy or complaint against Israel concerning its right to be in that land. The land that today is called Palestine, even though in times past, in the ancient days, it was not called Palestine. It was, there was no Palestine. Uh, matter of fact, you can't even find Palestine in the Bible. Okay, so that was that's a modern term that the uh, the the Palestinian people over there, uh, the, uh, Arab, the Arabs and the rest of them in the Middle East have come up with that term to try to uh, erase, you know, the historical uh, significance of the uh, of the land and the people of Israel. But anyway, uh, we'll get into that. But Israel has a complaint against the world that 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 is their ancient homeland that they're in right now and that they are not being treated fairly as a sovereign nation compared with other nations of the world which for the most part is true Israel in my opinion Israel has been under constant attack from the neighboring countries since coming back into their homeland and we'll see why that is as I mentioned in my last video the spiritual forces at work. Uh, the Satan is fighting against the, um, the people of God, and, and Satan is, is, is really he's trying to fight against God and, 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 and disrupt his plan for this for his for God's creation, but and for this world. Right now, Satan is the God. He's in control of this world system. This world system. Now, notice I said he's in control of the world system. Uh, but we, the, the people of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, we have been called out of this world system. And we are strangers and pilgrims. You know, we're supposed to be journeying on our way to, a, to our heavenly home, or our, 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 promise, our, our promised heavenly home, which will one day be on this earth, matter of fact. But we'll see that as we go on. So God has a controversy with Israel because of their unbelief and rebellion and with the nations of the world because of their hatred and treatment of Israel. In the Old Testament we read Micah, in Micah the sixth chapter, second verse, Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. Then in Romans, the 10th chapter, the 21st verse, Paul, the Apostle Paul says, But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. This is what God said through the prophets speaking to Israel. So, and then in Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, 34th chapter, 8th verse, For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion or Zion's complaint and cause against the nations of the world there will one day be God will one day take vengeance and recompense the, the enemies of Israel uh, we go on to see and uh, let's see and Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah had this to say in chapter 25, verse 31. 
A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh, he will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. So we see that God will one day deal with the, with the enemies of Israel. Judgment day is coming, all ye enemies of Israel. To see who is right or wrong concerning the controversy that exists because of Israel, we must look at the biblical historic history of God's chosen people. God spoke to Abraham one day saying, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. That's God's promised covenant with uh, Abraham. Genesis, the 12th chapter, verse 1 through 3. The Bible states that Abraham went forth into the land of Canaan. And the Canaanite people were in the land at that time. The Lord then appeared unto Abraham, whose name was Abram at that time, and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there Abraham built an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. That's Genesis 12, chapter, verse 5 through 7. We should understand that Canaan was the fourth son of Ham. After the flood, Noah and his sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, went out of the ark, and Noah began to cultivate the ground. And he planted a vineyard. He then drank of the wine and became drunk, and was uncovered and laying naked in his tent. Ham, one of his sons, came in and saw his father's nakedness and told his brothers outside the tent. The Bible says that Shem and Japheth did not look on their father's nakedness, but went into the tent backwards and covered Noah with a garment. Remember when Adam and Eve sinned and God saw that they were naked and covered them with animal skins? Nakedness is a symbol, symbolic Nakedness is symbolic of sin and unrighteousness in the Bible. It is interesting to note that in his letters to the seven churches, Jesus had this to say to the church of the Laodiceans, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Revelation 3rd chapter, verses 14 through 19. So we see, you can be spiritually naked. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are spiritually naked. You are blind. You are lost, and 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 hell and etern uh, and eternity in the lake of fire is the reward of the, of all those who reject God's plan of salvation in Jesus Christ. What can wash away our sins? Somebody said nothing but the the precious blood of Jesus. That's it. Nothing else can will, will suffice. God will not accept anything else. Not your works. Not your 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 deeds of uh, benevolence, or charity. Not your uh, trying to be a nice person. Uh, not your manufactured religious denomination or your religion. But you got to have faith in Jesus Christ and receive what he did on the cross and when he was crucified and died on the cross and raised up on the third day you got to receive that for the salvation of your soul and the forgiveness of your sins 
or else you're eternally lost. I'll continue my next.